So welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series of interviews, where we discuss with local business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and their challenges, and what's really driving them forward. So this afternoon, I'm delighted that we have with us Angus Shaw, who's the sales director at Brigantia. So first, Angus, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us. And if you'd like to introduce yourself and Brigantia to the audience, what you do and how you help people, that would be wonderful. Awesome, Chris. Thank you very much for having me on today. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm Angus Shaw. I'm the sales director of Brigantia. I was part of a uh, management buyout team in early 2016 that um, fundamentally started the brand Brigantia again. Yep. Um, Brigantia is a, a niche, probably the right way of putting it, a cybersecurity distributor uh, based in Sleepy Thirsk in rural North Yorkshire, um, and we um, specialise in bringing very unique new technologies to the UK and Ireland. Um, we work through um, about 1,400 channel partners who we yeah. sell our services to, um, everything from you know one-man bands with IT shops on the street, which there's, there's many of in in uh, Yorkshire, lots of thriving independent computer shops still, which is fantastic, through yep. to some of the biggest names, um, you know, such as Softcat or CCS Media, who are, you know, Softcat's a multi-billion pound business. So um, we represent, as of yesterday, 18 vendors who we bring their unique services to the to those channel partners. Well, well, that's absolutely fascinating uh, what, what you're doing and you you know you were saying that you, you do things differently I, I think you mentioned earlier you, you feel you do things it's a different model yeah yeah so we're we're, we're we're yeah obviously i think our location has a few challenges so we're we're, <laughs> we're you know still pretty much a family-run business we have really? four of my family in the business we have uh the ceo and his wife and a daughter so and then uh, our product marketing director and his wife are both involved so there's nine of us from three families across in in the team of 46 at the moment wonderful um and we yeah we i I suppose we 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 built the business we weren't under any sort of investment pressures um thankfully our you know we were very very well funded um in the early stages and so it meant that we you know could perhaps overstaff for what we needed and yeah focus on delivering like proper customer service we talk a lot about with the team that you know customer service is slowly dying you ring big brands and you yeah you know you you sit on hold for two you know (laughs) two hours in some cases or you ring hmrc god forbid and it's these days but um you know um we focus on that so we have a sort of two ring policy in the office so if uh phone rings if it hasn't been answered in two rings someone picks up the phone um and it's all about offering customer service to an area of our market that don't really get looked after very well right. traditionally our you know partners are servicing the smb space i guess that's not sexy for big cybersecurity brands um we were talking before chris about cybersecurity and and tech generally being the fastest growing industry in the world at the moment so you know there's a lot of focus on sponsoring formula one cars for example which a lot of the um the big vendors do and um you know i think we've tried to service an area of the market that traditionally has not been particularly well looked after and but give them access to truly groundbreaking market shifting um cybersecurity vendors to be able to better protect smbs and obviously hopefully you know well i know we've got a very much a growing business in yorkshire as well which is something we're we're really pleased to, to be looking after on our doorstep absolutely wonderful so i guess maybe if we start to sort of start with talking a little bit about your background uh you know how, how you got into business and why this particular one yeah so well so uh, into this particular one well my my old man um founded the brigantia brand originally in 1996 so it's been around a very very long time and it's been through a number of guises and um when i was about 17 our now ceo had a separate business and um you know him and my dad got heavily involved had a couple of businesses together and I um, was working for for Martin, our CEO, um, doing communication sales. So I was selling telecoms to channel partners, similar to what we we're doing at the moment. Yep. And anyway, the the company he was uh, owned and run at the time um, was sold to a to a much bigger provider. But um, there was an opportunity to keep our hands on Brigantia, which um, right. which we managed to do. Um, and so right. we we brought a very small chunk of that business out in early 2016. That was you know myself. Uh, Ian, who's my dad, and uh, Martin, who's the CEO, 
Um, and we've and from there we've taken it from, you know, um, you know, a couple of hundred grand turnover to um, we'll probably do twelve million this year. So Wonderful. it's been a it's been a it's a big been a big growth, and um, Dad and I particularly really proud to be doing that in rural North Yorkshire and proving that you know there are in in, in a town that traditionally you know there haven't been a huge amount of well paid jobs and yeah. huge potential to to earn good money and stay around with. You know, I guess we're we're trying to change that a little bit, and really? you know, we, we're up to forty six staff, and we have people, some people traveling from Leeds every day to to Thirsk, which you know is a bit of a change up for the books. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of other people going the other way. So yeah, um, yeah, uh, no, that's fantastic. I know I, I I've worked with a um a, an on well it's a tech, it's online training business over over in Ilkley, and, but it's primarily a development business, and they were they were really concerned about attracting people being leads both being a social and a tech hub could they get people to come in even to Ilkley and 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 you know it took a bit of time to find the right mechanisms but you know people you know that a standard of living and a, and a quality of life I would think is is like in Ilkley Thursk offers yeah, yeah. people yeah exactly and there's and there's plenty of people that want to live in the countryside yeah. but you know work in tech and yeah. you know often yeah I was told by someone that you know i've got a lot of respect for a long time ago that um you know sales is something people fall into and you know 90 percent of our business is, is sales and yep. or sales and marketing um you know we're we're distributor fundamentally is um there's lots of other terms for it but we're distributing services to um channel partners and fundamentally you know people need to realize that they want to do sales and see the opportunity of being sales people and i think cyber security is a really nice one if you're if you do realize you want to end up doing a career in sales, what a better place to be than one of the fastest, well, the fastest growing industry in the, in the world at the moment. Um, oh, and, and that's brought people, you know, we've, we've had a lot of loyalty, staff retention is really good. Right. Um, and, and those that, you know, we have a good split, I suppose, half live in the countryside and, you know, within half an hour of Thursk and half do come from bigger cities, yeah. and, but are happy to do so. So. Fantastic. So when you were growing up, is it, is this what you, Always, always oh, I do, oh it's a good question that i don't know <laughs> my god i was talking to my wife the other day like i don't know i i fell into it i suppose in the sense that i i'd lived around a man in technology all my life that, that's what dad's done since i was you know three or four so yeah. um you know i've been around it in some form and i've seen you know it being all about selling computers to there being no money in computers and so people buy them off amazon so yep. um you know i've seen all that journey but um you know at 17 18 i started doing a bit of work part time for martin i had a gap year so i then was, was more doing more for him and he, i said that i wanted to go to uni and he said will you continue working part time so i did and i lasted about 6 months cuz i realized i wanted to work um, so I, I dropped out of uni and I suppose I haven't looked back since and we've really? just gone back from, you know, we've gone at that point, there were five or, you know, three or four of us in the original buyout to, you know, 40 odd now. And, you know, certainly during COVID, I felt quite bad at times when people would be asking, you know, how's business and, you know, I, and, and business was good because yeah. fundamentally people needed to be secure working from home in the same yeah. way they were secure working in an office and, um you know be able to collaborate well as we're you know you and i are using zoom now so yeah i i think i suppose my my past has been destined i can't imagine doing anything else now really um and i i really enjoy it it's a different challenge every day and Wonderful. um you know we try and drive better standards with the team all the time but um you know I, yeah i really enjoy it and i'm I, I feel very fortunate to work in a sector that is growing you know against what is a very you know, difficult backdrop. Let's be honest. Yeah. In in yeah. general life, yeah. um, I feel very fortunate um, to be able to say that. So, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. And it it it, it, it always it reminds me of my, my first business. We we four of us took that from sort of nothing to 12, 12 million for yeah. Um, but with a hundred people because we we um we were more software consultancy and yeah, yeah. manpower. And 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 those changes that you see from I remember our first Christmas Christmas dinner was four of us. Yeah. Yeah, the table in the pub. Yeah. And, and 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 have you seen the changes in sort of management leadership in because once you get yeah. up 20, 30 people, it's very difficult to know 
everything about everybody if that makes it's sense. really interesting you say that as well because so so well i've certainly noticed the the increase in bill for the uh, christmas party and the uh <laughs> and going going for a quick drink after work that's for sure <laughs> i've certainly noticed that but but the the one that was really interesting was we were talking obviously and i think this is you know probably because we're rural and you know a lot of people do know each other and small yeah. towns and that so up to sort of 25 staff everyone you employed kind of someone knew of them yep um and we've had a really interesting challenge i suppose of that going from 25 to 46 which will be 49 as of a few weeks time wonderful you know you you <laughs> you see the challenges of employing people that you know perhaps you don't know at all and yeah. that whole interview process is very very different and you have to be much more rigorous in what you're doing and yeah. taking references and not just asking your, your mate that knows them through another mate and all that sort of stuff so yeah you know it's it's, it's growth challenges i suppose but they're, they're good challenges and what that brings yeah. is diverse personalities and yeah. people that add something completely different because yeah. if you just hire people that know of each other then fu- funnily enough you're going to get you know, often very, very similar people. And um, yes. so really nice to have be welcoming new personalities, people from different walks of life, different experiences. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, different working, different sectors. Yeah, brilliant. Wonderful. And and you know, talking of challenges, what what would you say are some of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome as, as you've grown? Um space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, office space has been interesting. Genuine genuinely I laugh about that, but it was that was tough, right? So after COVID, we were in Ripon and we had double the amount of people we had for the space we had. And we desperately, desperately tried to, we desperately, desperately tried to find um, uh, like office space in Ripon because that's where we were and that's where most of the staff were from or within that area um, for what I describe as a sort of medium size of small business. And there was nothing absolutely nothing we worked with the council we tried to push them over some empty buildings we were prepared to buy we were prepared to rent and basically you were if you were a 10 15 person office fine if you're 100 plus office fine right. but that bit in the middle nothing at all yep. and you know we'd be very fortunate to find a space from in thirsk um you know really good landlord that's spending a lot of lot of money on doing the the whole um office block up three or four floors but i think he's probably identified the opportunity to you know we're very nearly a1 and to build some you know growing businesses because there isn't enough office space around um and i that's absolutely you know i guess a a knock-on of covid and it not being something that people wanted to be involved in in the last few years but um that's been a challenge um you know managing managing lots of people is a you know very different different thing to do and you know bringing on team leaders and you know getting them to a position where they're comfortable managing people that's been a really i really enjoyed that that's been a you know more of a developmental thing i'd say than a from a challenging perspective but then i suppose we also have a constant battle um of new and evolving cyber threats and trying to uh, make sure the technologies we've brought to market are still relevant and still capable of doing everything that's needed to to yeah. fight you know russian north korean state-backed hacking which is going on yeah. um you know every day whether you're a small business big business you know hsbc whatever you're you're under attack in some form um yeah. so yeah a, lots of challenges but you know exciting all exciting yeah and, absolutely. You know, really and en- really enjoy it wonderful absolutely wonderful and you and it tell you know you can tell from from, from the the way you're talking it's wonderful and what you know obviously challenge well both challenges and, and and successes hopefully bring bring learning about what about business in general so what are some of the key things you you've learned about business and about growing a business in general um well 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 i was i've been very very fortunate to have a you know a very good mentor in the form of our ceo he's run ver- various various um recurring revenue businesses so right. he um he's been very successful he's uh, number five or number six recurring revenue business and so he pushed very hard from the start we don't do anything unless it's recurring revenue um right. and that's meant that we've had stability it's been slower growth because it's yep. monthly build services yep. instead of big annual invoices yep. or big three-year upfront invoices yeah um but what it's meant is that we've had very predictable, stable growth where we see month on month the billing go up and up and up. Yeah. Um. And actually, um, 
you know that i suppose is a really good lesson in itself is not starting every month from zero has been you know yeah. other, seen the benefits of that um i guess also uh from our own sort of journey the, the there's been some i guess internal operational challenges that we raised uh we raised 1800 invoices in june that's a lot of invoices to yes. be raising manually so we have you know we're now up to three um four finance staff that um you know are responsible in some form for all administration and yep. billing and management accounts and everything between them but that's a that's an operational challenge that um yep. i guess we've learned and we've we've started to automate a lot of that now but yep. you just do things over and over again and it's only when it gets really big you think there must be a better way for us to do this so yeah it's all it's all been learning curve on that on that on that journey wonderful wonderful and you mentioned your, your ceo being a great mentor and yeah. as, a, as a business coaching organization that sort of things we do i'm keen to know uh, alongside him who who else have been the, the the best coaches you've worked with whether that's business sport life in general yeah i've, I've, well, I've I played it a decent level of rugby up until I was 18. I had some great, I had some great rugby coaches and, um, yeah. um, you know, always took a lot from, you know, how they managed people and got the best out of people. I think that's probably what had been one of the best things in terms of man management is, you know, how to get best out of people and, you know, how to phrase yeah. how you speak with people, um, to push their buttons, I suppose, as well to, yes. to get the most from them. Um, you know, obviously I take a lot of inspiration from, my dad having a business that has been around since well almost 27 years now so yeah, you know uh, it, it's a it's 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 had some rocky moments and it's had some great successful moments but this now i think from his perspective is yeah he's very proud that we have a business that right. is the biggest it's ever been and um you know all four of us in my family are directly involved so yeah. um yeah it's it's good fun and i think i you know i'm just really enjoying seeing some of the guys so my two sales managers are now five years in with me and we took them at, as business development executives employee eight and employee nine and they're now managing teams of five and six respectively so that's really cool to see really cool yeah. to see no that, that, that that's absolutely uh, uh yeah absolutely wonderful and, and great to see it's interesting and I, I don't know if you or your, your dad know the stats but it, it's worth knowing is that um unfortunately only twenty percent of businesses make it past five years. Yeah, and, I, oh, I had heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, it's I'm scary, a, isn't it? Yeah, it gets, it gets worse, yeah. unfortunately, because of of that twenty percent, only twenty percent of those make it to the next five years. So really? to be yeah. past ten years, you're in yeah. the top four percent. Yeah, you know, that's co- that's good to know. Yeah, it's good to know. And it's, it's been different guises. The businesses yeah. have done different things in that time, but yes. um, you know, this particular one, yeah, we're seven, seven and a half years in on mm. this round round. So yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's it, it's always good to know because it's it's yeah, you know, it, it's it's. I'll remind him. Please <laughs> do. We'll talk about celebration a bit later. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> and, and and from whether it's from your mentors or just from anything you've learned, what what do you, do you use any favorite quotes or sayings on a regular basis? Oh. No, I don't really. I don't really. And I and I, I always thought about this and I and I'm terrible. My wife has a go at me all the time. I am so bad. She reads so much. She's a she's a bookworm, but I literally I I'm I'm terrible for reading. I I I'm very up to date with current affairs. I read a lot um from that side of things and get dragged into reading about politics too much, unfortunately. But I um I um, the, I, I think there's, I take inspiration a lot from people I meet and see, yeah. um, not necessarily reading and what they, what they, yeah. what people say, but, um, you know, I, I think I just like to see people with character. I, you know, yeah. we recently employed someone who won't go into too much detail, who was so raw, so raw and, um, you know, just being able to see potential in someone and Wonderful. take them through their, their, you know, first few months, years in the job is, you know, really, really. Wonderful. inspirational to me more than anything yeah absolutely wonderful it's, it, 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 yeah it's a great thing to be able to be part of that I, um we, I, I was reading um kevin sinfield's book recently and um he he was talking about leadership oh uh, yeah i've seen him speak actually i've seen kevin speak at, um a couple of lunches i've been to yeah wonderful. he's fantastic fantastic yeah him and and um 
slightly more foul mouth, but Jamie Peacock, I, uh, I heard him speak uh, <laughs> once at a lunch and I'm not sure whether he was effing every other word or every three words, but he was, he was brilliant. And that was yeah. all about, that was all about leadership and, you know, basically yeah. how he felt that he had a, you know, other than Kevin Sinfield, a pretty untalented group of guys. And just through group, sheer determination, <laughs> they, they became, and hard, being hard became the, the best. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, cool. It, it, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a the great people to learn from. I think the thing yeah. I picked up from Kevin, he said, even at an early age, like 12, 13, was he realised if he wanted to win it, he needed to get the best out of the people around him. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, that's quite a wise thing at, at that age. Yeah. So, I wonder if so they, they're saying he's turned into a great coach as well, haven't they? They, yeah. um, he, he's now always the England defence coach as well now, isn't Correct. it? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's he's a real he's a he's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant yeah. guy. Um, and and another question about yourself: what what would you say you've learned about yourself as, as through throughout your journey, Angus? Ah. Uh, so I um we've we've done we've done all sorts of sort of um personality things as we've have uh, we've as we've taken on staff and I, I I did a clarity 4D profile about 18 months ago, which was the first time I suppose I really opened my eyes to this. But I, I think what I've learned one is to let people speak more as a young as a young sales guy, 18, 19, I was very, very guilty of you know, I'm going to get my point across and one way or yeah. the other, I'm going to force you over the line. <laughs> I guess I've become much more relaxed in the nature and try and encourage that of the team is that, you know, one, you know, we don't need customers like to who don't want to work with us. Yes. We want to work with people that want to work with us and really? buy in what we do. And if we don't, if they don't value what we do, then we don't need them. And equally, we don't have any hard feelings because there'll be a reason why and we move on. Um I guess as I have got busier and everyone goes on about being busy, it's dull, but, you know, as I've got busier and, you know, more on my plate, I suppose, uh, learning to re respect my own time has been something that yeah. I've, I've really, and really, really, and, um, had to learn the hard way and delegate, um, delegate a lot more than, um, I did previously. And I think also, you know, how I, how I speak to people, I guess I'm very, very direct. Um, and, and a lot of the team respond really well to that, but there's always, certain team members that need a slightly different approach and that yes. approach is something that i've i've worked really really hard on in the last sort of two Brilliant. three years to try and get right for people and yeah. um i you know it's something new every day um which genuinely you know a lot of people say that but genuinely you know although i do know a lot about what we do there's always something that i yeah. you know learn almost on a daily basis which i find really exciting and i think i'd struggle if i wasn't <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know, lots of people in in in, our, in sort of entrepreneurial roles, it, it, there's a need for variety on a regular basis. There's, there's a whole bunch of group of people that love the surety and the stability of a, of, of similarity, but, yeah. but many of us that sort of that are running businesses, it, it, it's one of our character traits to like new things. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. It, it's great to understand that, but but yeah. also understand that other people may not, and, and 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 I think that's a big part of leadership. Brilliant. So, I mean, I, I mean, great! What a great story so far. And just looking to the to the future, what what does the future look like for you guys? And what what are the main challenges you you foresee, if any? Um, challenges, I suppose, are uh, we are you know pretty beholden to um, market demand, I suppose. Yeah. So you know, people people need to be being hacked, and you know, the cyber industry to be being. <laughs> Um, you know the the bad guys to be to be being successful in some form, although we want them to be as unsuccessful as possible. Um, it's quite a strange. It's a bit of a double edged sword for us. Like they have to they have to be having some success for it to continue to grow in the way it is. Although we want to try and stop that. Um, education is key because people are so unaware and apathetic at times towards cybercrime and genuinely. You know the risks of cyber attacks should be something that are being considered by all organisations yeah. because. You know, most MDs or CEOs that you talk to or, um, you know, our partners are speaking to, you know, don't understand what the potential consequence is yeah. if they were attacked. And if you say to them, you cannot do anything for two weeks, they suddenly do wake up to it. Um, but it's about taking them on that journey and educating them that actually, you know, they, there isn't a certain amount of money that they have to put aside to protect their businesses in the same way they buy cyber insurance uh, by they buy insurance they now buy cyber insurance or um you know they uh have to send staff on first aid training whatever it may be um 
people don't really think twice about having a training budget. No, less cybersecurity budget. Oh, that's just IT. That's the general response it's, you get, and actually, yeah, yeah. it's not anymore. It really can't be just no. IT. Um, you can't be making a choice between having a new laptop and protecting that laptop. Um, you've yep. got to be doing both. So, yep. um, you know, that's a challenge. Obviously, continuing to grow the team has its challenges and yep. bringing on the right people and training them and getting them up to speed. And um, I suppose, um, you know, that's that's all, you know, exciting. Um, and then obviously, I, I don't like saying it, but whatever's going on in the world at this moment in time, you know, that has its challenges. It has whether that's just how people's personal outlook on life, how they feel in themselves, whether it's the business itself. Like there's so many challenges that come with that. But you know, I suppose just being mindful of people and, you know, no one really know you don't really know what's going on with the person at the end of the phone. Um, being no. mindful of that and is a really good way to, you know, have to to approach things. Yeah, bang on. Absolutely brilliant. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And and I'm keen to know what you'd say to anyone that was thinking of going into business right now, Angus. Oh, I love it. I don't know. I'm very fortunate. I I really I wasn't me taking the risk, I suppose, in, in at the point that we started. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm I I do consider myself very lucky in that regard. But, um, you know, to, it it takes it's a big thing to do, isn't it? Quit your job and start your own business with you know six yeah. months pay in the bank or a year's pay in the bank. You know, how many times could you afford it for it not to work? You know, yeah. you've just told me about the stat of five years, but you know what it can bring you, the freedoms it can give you in life, and the the fun you can have along the way, and developing people's huge and uh, you know yeah. i can't imagine myself you know working for um a big corporate that's for sure i could never imagine that but um you know I, i'm very fortunate to have been given that foothold to be able to to have a go um and you know i'm sure i will do so again and again um but i, I I'd, it's brilliant it's a lot of fun um there are obviously risks involved but i would encourage anyone to to have a go Wonderful. Your your energy and enthusiasm you really, <laughs> That's really not, I was gonna say energy at five o'clock on a Wednesday. I suppose we're halfway through the week. It That's must be that. It must really, be that. <laughs> pretty cool. No, pretty no, I can see you just love it and it's great. It's great. See and that you know that that you know, I believe that that, that you know the growth of a business is directly related to the energy and enthusiasm of its leaders. It, it's it's you know if we, I think if you're doing something you enjoy, it makes it easier, Chris. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Is I I feel really fortunate to have found something really interesting and really relevant that I enjoy. Yeah. And I think starting a business in you know cardboard boxes or something, I might not have the same energy. But um, <laughs> cybersecurity, I seem to have I seem to have really found an interest in. And I suppose it's that ever changing thing. You yeah, know, some people like really repeatable businesses that they know inside out i like yeah. a bit of the unknown and the fact yeah. that we might have to do something different tomorrow yeah wonderful absolutely wonderful and, and finally angus what would be the best advice you could give an 18 year old you if you're able to go back in time and do so uh how many times do people say it? Yeah, two ears one mouth 100 percent, no <laughs> doubt no doubt about it i see it in some of the sales guys now that we employ that you know i was exactly the same talking too much listen to what the listen to what you're being told and act upon that don't just garble stuff at people two ears one mouth really? people's people's opinions will help you more than they will hinder you absolutely i yeah. think what's the there's a lovely phrase i think it was stephen covey which was listen and also listen to understand rather than respond yeah. Which yeah, I love because yeah. I think yeah. it, that's the point, isn't it? It's like, yeah. It, it, yeah. Um, but and and I, I, one of my old coaches, he, and he, he developed this idea of the cup of coffee game. And yeah, he, and, he, and he's I don't know if you, but he, basically you imagine whether you've got one or not, you imagine you both got a coffee, you and the and the prospect, and the gate, the the goal is to drink drink hours before they start theirs. And yeah, yeah, that, that's. That, that's a very good that's a very good way of putting it that is for sure yeah yeah because then you've got a full context of what you need to be able to talk uh, about uh, absolutely yeah. and it's, but it's difficult as you say especially when you're enthusiastic because it's like we, you know, we yeah. want to tell you how great things are but but and i'm terrible chris when someone says something that I, don't, I want to i want to disagree with or debate about and uh, you know I, I i i'm terrible for cutting in but i i I'm trying to get better at that where you listen and then get your point across because there might be a reason that they have that view as well, which, you know, may be very well founded, but, but without listening, you won't know. hundred uh, yeah. percent. Absolutely. Cause it, and, and I think it's, you know, 
other people's perception is their reality and it's like it may not be true but if they perceive it to be true it's true and we we it's very difficult to shake that um it's certainly just with the counter argument if that makes any sense it's it's understanding why they would think a particular way and hopefully helping them see a different way of looking at things but 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 there we go but absolutely but, angus it's been really delightful and, and 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 you know really inspiring actually your energy and your enthusiasm comes across so well and and it's not surprising that you guys are doing so well. Uh, so thank, Thanks, thank you so much for today. And um, it'd be and it'd be great maybe to swing by another six, twelve months and just see what, what the ongoing well, hopefully is. hopefully we've had some more growth and some different challenges. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love it, that because it would be brilliant. And for yeah. anyone that's watching that would like to get in touch with you or Brigantia, what would be the best way to do so? I, yeah, I'm I'm on LinkedIn or email me directly, angus.shaw at brigantia.com or um, you know, uh, via our website, absolutely brigantia.com. Thanks, Brilliant. Chris. Well, once again, thank you so much for your time today. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.